I'm Kelly Harrell, author, modern animist, and creator of The Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, animism, soul-tending, and how each of those intersects through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. You can find the archive of all of the rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com, and if you're not sure what a half-month is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune at Soul Intent Arts. It's explained at the beginning of every rune cast. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the RuneCast and this podcast possible with their financial support. If you'd like to support the weekly rune, you get access to the full RuneCast, no ads, more details on the RuneCast, weekly prompts for engaging the half-month rune in your personal work, and a Galder recording for how to work with the weekly RuneCast through chanting. You can contribute as little or as much as you'd like, and the rewards scale according to what you'd like to receive. And if you don't want any rewards, you just want to show your support, you're welcome to do that. Go to patreon.com and search for The Weekly Rune. You can also subscribe to the free version of The Weekly Rune by going to soulintentarts.com. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, y'all. I hope everybody has had nice holidays. I took a little time off, and it was good, a needed thing. I'm happy to be back with What in the Weird, and as we approach our 50th episode, it's close. I know, right? I had no idea. Anyway, I'd like to open up discussion to a Q&A episode, and I'd like to hear what your questions and insights are around the runes and how they fit into personal guidance and sacred activism for you. What aspects of the runes would you like for me to discuss? Feel free to email me your thoughts at kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, at soulintentarts.com. You can message me on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts, and I swear I'll look for that secret hidden notification thing. Or you can just send them via Anchor, the app that I use to record What in the Weird. So about this New Year thing, you do realize it doesn't really mean crap to the runes or to the Old Norse approach to timekeeping, because it doesn't. It's purely a mathematically calculated timestamp to get us to all agree on how we're meeting our demands. So while I wish you a happy new year, do realize I'm making faces while I say it. For those of you who read the weekly rune, I hinted at a concept that I didn't fully develop in the rune cast, and I want to talk about that in this episode. In the RuneCast, I mentioned how Awas is a point of frustration where we've failed to fall back on our own resources, our skills, our knowledge, our wisdom. And I also talked about how, as humans, we suck at doing that. We want a guide or, or some higher power, some component of manifest destiny to just hand us shit. It, it's, it's wired in us on some level. And even when we're distressed and we feel like we have nothing else left to contribute to the solution, our go-to is to find another stream of input that we have faith is greater than our own. And I'm not saying that doesn't exist. You should work your resources, however divine they are, but make sure you're not overworking them. That's a touchy, touchy subject in the world of organized religion and in the new age. Who to thunk it? I recently posted something to that effect online and was politely but yet backhandedly told that if our guides aren't meeting our needs and showing up with clarity in muffin baskets, then they aren't really our guides or they're evil tricksters. Maybe. And maybe I'm totally game to learn. I don't know it all, and I'm the first person to wear that t shirt. 
Yet I do have a lot of experience with guides who take no shit, by which I mean they don't hand things out on a platter unless you're willing to forge that platter in the fire of your own rebirth first. And my experience is that it's a give and take relationship with guides. We don't hold both mastery over the same components of how things work. They focus on tasks bigger than we know, bigger bigger than we need to know, and on cheerleading us to do our own work. They are emotionally indifferent to how we function in this plane. And yet we focus on remembering our soul nature while navigating the challenges of a culture that wants to strip that soulness from us. Those streams don't often cross, and when they do, you guessed it, it has a price, and that price is madness. So yeah, madness is the other thing I briefly mentioned in the Runecast. And really, it's regarding Ewas and Tiwas reversed, which is the rune of how to best deal with the half month in this week's cast. So Ewas is the half month rune, and Tiwas reversed was the rune that intuitively came up for how to best manage Ewas. So go read it for real. It'll fill in some blanks and what I'm talking about today. Many times I've talked about Ewas as being this forced path. It's it's like being shunted down a long, narrow path that has no room for turning around or backing up, so your only option is to go forward. And the concern there is that we can't see where the path goes. You know, whether there's a corner that we can't see around or fog clouds or darkness clouds how to go forward. The only option we have is to press on. A lot like life. A lot like growth. So this this tension of not being able to go backwards, but total uncertainty about where your feet are planted right now, let alone what lies ahead, that is the setting of our current half month. Luckily, we did all that needs assessment work and skills gaining through the early second et, right? So now we have something to fall back on when we're flying blind. That's the plan. You know, that, that's the progression, the seasonal progression of how we end at Ewas, this rune of death that is the middle rune of the Elder Futhark. Okay, so throw he was reversed into that mix, and I hear windshield shatter. Seriously, Tiwaz alone freaks people out every time it comes up in their rune casts. It's the battle rune, and honestly, I feel like it's a really misunderstood rune, but who the hell am I? It's actually, if, if I had to play favorites, it's Tiwaz, and people think I'm bananas when I say that because it's hardcore, but you know what? Just take a guess. So, Tiwaz freaks people out. It's kind of historically considered the battle rune. There's there's really interesting precedent for what it means in the Eddas. Go read all that stuff, read it twice, and then let's talk about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So, with that understood, it it's about realizing mid confrontation that your best effort isn't going to work. It's about realizing in the mix, like in the midst, that plan A is not going to support you and you have to go with plan B, which of course assumes that you have one. The challenge with TYs, like that isn't enough, right? The challenge with TYs is that it's all about heart stuff. The whole reason that you're in a confrontation is because you're in it. Like whatever the dynamic is, you're in it completely, whether it's a relationship or work or a project or a, a state of being or some enlightenment you've been trying to achieve, some community you're trying to be better in. The challenge with Tiwaz is this deep heart investment, and nobody makes a plan B with heart stuff. That's why it's heart stuff, because everything in you says go. Every element of your consciousness says, this is the one, run straight to it. That's how we handle heart stuff. It's emotional manifest destiny. If I feel it, I'm supposed to have it. 
And if I feel it, it's already mine. When we have Awas and Tiwas reversed in this equation, what we're really saying is I have but one option and I don't like that option and I refuse to take it. The ticket with Tiwas, wait, did I just date myself by saying that? Okay, wait. The deal with Tiwas is it's the gauntlets thrown down. It's the all-in heart song laid bare. It's the deepest dream brought to bear and nothing supports it. In fact, everything lies in opposition to this dream. Some folks meet that kind of barrier and they push harder. Like they, they see, oh, this is a challenge. This is my dream. This is just merely part of the process and I have to buckle down and do more. What's the saying? That repeating the same actions and expecting different results is insanity. Yeah. Other people step into that kind of situation, that confrontation, and realize the futility. They get that pressing onward in a broken dream is pointless and yet they can't cope with the emotional process that defeat conjures. So they stay locked between fight or fly. They do nothing. They just stand there and get pummeled. They stand there and their dream never moves forward in whatever potential other iteration that it could. Because if you're up on your Tiwas, then you know that the dream does manifest, but only when this confrontation is dealt with. So... If you're one of these people who realizes the futility and you just stand there, that's PTSD. And in shamanic terms, that's soul loss. And in everyday, here we are in the real world terms, that's madness. Realizing that you have a choice in freezing, realizing that you have tools and you choose not to use them, either one, or going through all the teaching of the first half of the Elder Futhark and still not recognizing when the moment demands that you act on what you've learned, that you act on your own behalf, that's fragility. What is fragility? Well, it's the inability to face challenge from a teachable place. It's being confronted with a blatant need to do better in responding with disbelief, defensiveness, paralysis, even aggression. Sure, we can call fragility a trauma response. It's a state of being triggered. There's a buzzword. But it's a real place, am I right? When you're in the headlights, yours or someone else's, and you have to act now, you have to be solid in the work that you've done with the needs assessment, setting boundaries, and figuring out how you go forward, you have to be fully behind whatever you choose to do, especially in the moments when you don't have time to think. And I fucked it up. I know you have too. Fragility comes in many guises. It may be white fragility when you can't face that your best effort still generates racial oppression, however micro or kind it might look on the surface. It might be male fragility in which your most femme stance still hurts women or minimizes their options. Maybe you're a survivor of some traumatic life event and you finally realize that despite that terrible experience, you still carry inherent privilege that other people are never going to have. Or maybe it's solely personal fragility, not the community stuff, not the way you're behaving. You think it's the best effort you've got and it still hurts somebody else. Maybe it's personal fragility in which you have the option to make some component of your own life better and you don't. Regardless There comes a point in every present that we're forced to make a call and act, that we're forced not to call on some divine intervention to pull our asses out of the fire. Sometimes it's just on us, plain and simple, all that work you've done. And that time is now. That time is Awa's.
That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about working the runes in season, or you just need a cheerleader, feel free to email me at kelly at solentonarts.com. Or you can call in through the Anchor app, which is how I record What in the Weird. And you can download Anchor on Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and all those other platforms for podcasts. If you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies, Brandis Schnabel and Janet Roper, which is also on Anchor. And other podcasts you may enjoy are Around Grandfather Fire, hosted by James Stovall and Sarah Odinson, and Why Shamanism Now, hosted by Christina Pratt. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting solentonarts.com, and I'm most active on social media at Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird. <laughs>